You're listening to The Interview Show with Seth Goldstein on the phillytech.org netcast network. Thank you to our sponsors, aweber.com, wistia.com, Zoho Mail, and getflywheel.com. Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of the interview show. I'm Seth. I am greeted with David Thomas or David Dylan Thomas, depending on how you know him and how you find him on social media. It's either David Thomas or David Dylan Thomas. Um, and he's one of the few people that can actually pull off using the middle name. And it actually <laughs> works. The kind of like a um alliteration is it was alliteration duh, duh. The David Dylan, yeah, is the alliteration, yeah. It works. Like the the Thomas, yeah. So let's call you the for the rest of the period, right? <laughs> I, you know, I want to quickly point out you to this little box up here. You know, if you want to help out the show, go to patreon.com slash phillytechorg. Give us a buck a month, you know, help us out, help us get some more equipment for the studio and whatnot, and help us really get this thing up and running. Or we're on Indiegogo for the rest of the month, or I think until mid-month. I'm trying to raise $700 on Indiegogo. I go to socl.bz slash Indiegogo. Um, also, I want to thank our sponsors. We have Aweber. Who they are email service providers. They are the ones that help you get your emails delivered to the inboxes. Um, so email marketing. Um, get Flywheel is our web host. They are incredible. They are our they are our hosts, and they are WordPress optimized. So they focus on WordPress and even WordPress running smoothly on their servers. Their virtual private servers. They're great. I love them. They're they're fantastic. They host all my clients on there. Uh, we have Zoho Mail. They are an email service. Um, it, it, that's an, in addition, it's in addition to Aweber. This is where you actually get emails back when people say, hey, we left your stuff. We can email you back and you get it in Zoho. And then Zoho Mail. And then Wistia.com. They, they are web video hosts. Sort of like Vimeo, but more for business. And check them out at Wistia.com. So on the David here. So Dave, who are you and why do we care? <laughs> uh, so my name is David Dylan Thomas. I am a uh, content strategist and filmmaker living here uh, in Philly. Actually, just outside Philly, I live in media, but I uh, work here and uh, up in uh, Conshohocken. So by day, I work as a content strategist at a company called EPAM, um, doing all the content things. But then I also try to uh, document the uh, Philadelphia tech scene in a web series called Developing Philly. Mm -hmm. And when I'm not doing that, I'm out talking about content either as the head of Content Strategy Philly or organizing events like Content Camp or Bar Camp Philly. Bar Camp. Hey, I'm, wearing, I'm wearing the shirt. Yes. Very I'm good. Shirt. That's different, right? <laughs> I'm wearing the shirt. From this Represent. Year. It was a great, it was a great, great event. And, and that's every, what is it? That's every, um... Pretty much every November is when we do uh, Bar Camp. And then a Content Camp rolls around uh, every spring. I'll contest for you, and we'll make sure we announce that also on our on phillytech.org so that everyone can know when that is and sign up and support David on that. So David, so what, what, tell me a little bit more about developing Philly. Like what? Sure. So uh, a ways back, I was actually at a uh, convention called South by Southwest, and Felicia Day, the uh, you know famous uh, uh, actress and um, uh, web series producer. Uh, was talking about getting into web series, and I had never actually tried that before. And she said, you know, write what you know, or make movies about what you know. And what I kind of knew was the Philly tech scene, and originally I was going to do a fictional uh, web series about, you know, tech workers in Philly, and I realized to do that right, I'd have to do some research and talk to some of my friends in the Philly tech scene, get their stories, and then I realized that actually would make a great web series, just getting their stories. And so I teamed up with um, our co-producer, Maurice Gaston, um, in 2011-2012, uh, we started shooting, and uh, in 2013, we uh, released our first season, um, and that uh, went really well. And that's on YouTube? So that's on YouTube. It's also on Vimeo. Uh, if you go to the website, developingphilly.com, you'll see it all there. All there, okay. And um, so what kind of equipment did you use to record it? Like, did you just use a SLR or...? Yeah, actually, uh, that was one of the nice things about it. By the time we decided to start shooting the technology, it got to the point where DSLR is a great, relatively inexpensive tool for shooting amazing, you know, filmic-looking uh, video. Mm -hmm. So we were able to make a great-looking series uh, at a relatively low cost. I think the most expensive thing um, in our entire budget was getting really nice laptops to edit on. 
Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. And so, is there another season coming out soon, or what's the plan for development? So, soon is a relative term. Uh, we're definitely going to do another season, and a probably more complex season, which is why it's taking a little bit longer. Uh, that it's always take a while to do. Yeah, uh, and one of the um, results of uh, the success of the first season is that we were asked to run Bar Camp. Um, oh, yes, definitely. So uh, that was amazing, but it also you know took up some of the time we were going to use for season two. So we're definitely working on season two. Hope to shoot it over the next year um, and uh, get that up hopefully uh, end of next year, beginning of 2016. Awesome. And I just was showing, if you're watching the video and not listening to the podcast, um, I just was just showing the website. Very well, very clean you know, website, you know, kind of gives it a sense of, you know, it's based on Philly, hence developing yeah. Philly. And so what, what, what made you first get into content marketing and, like, into content exactly? So uh, I've really been into content my whole life. You know, as a filmmaker, obviously, I was producing content, but then around 2000, I started working in uh, online education um, as an uh, online tutor and um, web specialist trying to help to put together tr curriculums for uh, kids around, really around the world to get together and workshop their writing with each other. And so it was around then I started to realize the power of content, the power of connecting people through content. And whether as uh, I was an online editor-in-chief for a while, I was a director of communications oh, for a while, and all these different jobs, in one way or another, I was doing content strategy. This job I have now at uh, EPAM is actually the first time my card actually says content strategist, but I've really been doing it one way or another for the past 10, 15 years. Oh, wow. Where did you go to school? So I went to Hopkins. Um, oh, and, there you yeah. go. And uh, it's funny, player? I went there. What's that? You're a lacrosse player? No. No, it's funny, though. I grew up in Maryland, so I was, saw plenty of lacrosse, but I didn't play any. Oh, where in um, Maryland did you grow up? So I was born in Columbia, Maryland, and grew up in Baltimore County, but really from Hopkins on, I lived right in Baltimore City. Ah. Well, what's it called? The Charm City, right? Exactly, yeah. It is very charming. <laughs> yeah, 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 I think a lot of people I was talking to, the editor in chief of um, Technically Philly, and they were technically Baltimore as well, and they were saying how Philly and Baltimore are very scrappy and very tech-centered, but they are they're not like New York or Silicon Valley. They're kind of very similar. They're kind of rough and tumble with a little yeah. bit of eclecticness. So what made you go up to Philadelphia? Like, How did you end up here? So uh, I always think Philly, I think you. It's funny. Well, I, uh, I, my wife uh, got a job at Children's Hospital Philadelphia. Oh, really? Cool. That's when we moved up here, uh, and I kind of fell in love with the city immediately. Super walkable. I mean, compared to Baltimore, for example, Baltimore's great, but it's sort of like a checkerboard. Like you can turn a corner and be very much in the bad part of town very quickly. Yeah. Uh, whereas Philadelphia, you can kind of walk for long swaths of it. And, you know, yeah, but yeah, really Philadelphia, you know, Philadelphia, you can kind of you know oh, like yeah, walk, like walk. There's parts of Northeast yeah. Philadelphia that are like, whoa, 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 oh, yeah. whoa, 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 get back on that but, other street. But you have to go for a while to get to them, right? Like I can walk from river to river in Center City and be perfectly fine, um, and up and down That's for a whole moment. bunch of blocks. That's moment. But uh, but yeah, but I know what you mean. I mean, there's parts of Super South Philly, there's parts of North Philly. You know, what, like West but you can kind of walk is, to get to them. West Philadelphia. You know, every time I say West Philadelphia, I think Will, um, Will Smith, born and raised. Sure, sure. Okay, but, so. Yeah. You know, to that point, when we first moved here, we were looking for houses, and uh, one of the places we were looking at, remember, this is like early 2000s, was uh, right down the street from the basketball court where they shot that you know scene from the opening of Fresh Prince. Wow. And uh, so back then, that was not the best part of town. One of the guys we were talking to was saying, oh, yeah, there's an open-air drug market around the corner, <laughs> and... Uh, you know, when there's a robbery, the cops usually come about 20 minutes. It's not so bad. You know, he was he was saying all this stuff like it was a plus. But yeah, that was that was where Will Smith was born and raised. That's that's where that uh, basketball. Exactly. Was. Yeah, the whole thing about like you know when you say like swaths, you know, or checkerboard. West Philadelphia is very much a checkerboard. Oh yeah, yeah. You go far enough. Literally, you've Penn, you've Drexel, then you have Pouton Village, which is kind of turning around. Mm -hmm. Then you go a little farther north toward 69th Street, and it's sort of like whoa, oh my god. Yeah. But, I mean, when we got here, it was right when that gentrification was right at its height, right? So my wife got a job out at CHOP, so you go through Penn, University City, all the way to 40th is basically safe. Nowadays, you go out to 50th, 60th, you know, it's still getting increasingly, you know, safe. It's getting increasingly gentrified as the, the, the further out you go there. Yeah, it is, and it's almost becoming the next cool place to live, you know? Yeah. 
And so, so content strategy, you've been doing that for a while. Like, what were you, you said you were the editor-in-chief of an online publication? Oh. So I used to work at the North American Publishing Company. They have a big building up on... Uh, NAPCO. Yeah, yeah, NAPCO up on uh, Spring Garden. And so for about four years, I worked there as an online editor-in-chief, and this is right when they do trade publications, print mm -hmm. publications. And um, each of those magazines had a website, and it was right about the time, this is mid-2000s, right about the time when the ad sales for online started to outpace the sales for print, and so they realized we need to actually get our websites in order. So um, they hired me on to help do that because all their staff was devoted to really getting the print side uh, mm -hmm. in order. So that was really my first exposure to you know, really kind of hardcore content strategy. You've got five different websites with five different audiences. You've got to balance video, audio, web, a bunch of different contributions, what's in print, what's going to be transferred to the web, all of that stuff. So it gave me a really good grounding in content strategy. What's your, what's your background? Like, what did you go to Hopkins for? Like, like, so I went to Hopkins with the brilliant idea that I would get into film by being an engineer, because I didn't want to go out to Hollywood <laughs> and have, you know, no job, no money. I wanted a good job, but still in, you know, in Hollywood. So I figured, oh, I'd go work for wow. Disney or something. Like, and just, so, because Hopkins was good for electrical engineering, and I was good at math, so I was like, okay, I'll, I'll try this. I quickly found out I was terrible at electrical engineering, and after about two and a half years, I switched majors to writing seminars, which is basically creative writing, and I somehow still finished in four years. But the stuff I went to Hopkins was really more writing seminars, theater, film, all that stuff. I got you, I got you. Because I know when I went to Delaware, I went to, into history and journalism with the hopes that it would get me into marketing. You know, and, and you know, but I, so I would, could avoid the business school and avoid the math. I see. Yeah. I wanted to avoid the math. I see. So I wanted to avoid the math, so I went into history. Great, great. <laughs> yeah, history, history majors. I'm a, I'm a history major with a constitution and journalism with minors in anthropology and poli sci. The only thing I've actually really used uh -huh. is the journalism part. Ah. It wasn't even real, it was part of a major. Right. A full major. <laughs> so, yes, yeah, so I know you're talking about, at least electrical engineering, you tried to have a, you know, like, get, you know, a, like, some this is a trade, right. this is what you're learning how to do, you're going to immediately go out and get a job in this. Yeah. Yeah, think about four like years. Yeah, I think about four years before I had a job that had anything to do with writing. Well, what did you do right out of college? Right out of college, I worked in a record store, and basically any. I see that. Uh, yeah, it was fun. I mean, any any um, any independent film that came to town, I volunteered to be on the crew, and that was my film school basically. Um, but during the day, honestly, that's the way I, do it. I, uh, I just worked in a record store to make ends meet. Honestly, that's what this, the thing in journalism. Everything I learned in journalism school, out the window. Out mm -hmm. the window. First job in journalism, I was like, holy crap. No one prepared me for this. Yeah. I lasted three weeks. Yeah, yeah, I had a friend who had a similar experience. He was in, uh, took a lot of journalism classes at Hopkins, right out of the gate got a job at one of the local papers, and it was a rude awakening for him. The LA paper, oh my god. Holy mackerel. It just does it to, it does it to you. I mean, what is NAPCO? NAPCO is a... Um... So NAPCO is trade publications, so they yes. were all like B2B, maybe one B2C. But like, so what, like, what kind of stuff at NAPCO did you like to... Oh, so the division I was in was the Consumer pub consumer Technology Publishing Group. So they sold you know, to um, magazines that went out to uh, people who owned like, electronic stores and, and, and consumer oh, electronics. electronic buyer weekly. Yeah, exactly. So, so they had magazines like you know, Dealer Scope and consumer, like, uh, consumer retail, Custom Retailer. Uh, but they also had a um, consumer-facing magazine that was all about the latest tech. So that was kind of fun. I mean, I got to go to CES a few years and oh, really? you blog posts about the latest tech. So that was that was kind of a fun part of it. You went to, you went to CES. Yes, um, yes. I was wanted to go there. It's it's, it's, it's probably it's 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 a bit of a nightmare. I mean, especially if, if you have to work during it, it's just sort of nonstop craziness. Um, I suppose it might be fun to sort of like as as an observer to go, but it's 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 intense. I'll tell you that much. Did, did you come home sick? Did you come home with a cold? Uh, no, but I actually got sick while I was out there. The first oh, time wow. I Most people like after for like CES, three nights. Hear, a lot of people at CES, they say there's a CES sickness. Right after the, the show, <laughs> everyone gets so worn down. Oh, yeah, it's, your, your, your immune system gets shredded. You're just, you're up all day, all night. It's crazy. Oh, man, definitely. So, David, where can people find you online? Because it's not, I know it's not, I always, I was joking to be interested with David Dylan Thomas, but you're not on Twitter. So, it's at movie underscore pundit. Because I got there right in time for David Dylan Thomas to be gone. <laughs> oh, you just missed that. And at the time, that was my email address. So, and I was big into writing movie criticism. So, movie underscore p u n d i t. That's my Twitter handle. That's the easiest way to find me. And you can also go to davidylanthomas.com 
or um, you know, look me up on uh, uh, look up Developing Philly. Um, Developing Philly really looks really cool. I, I gave you a link on our website, so you can always just go to our shows we think are cool. I think it's, what's it called? It's called I don't know what the thing's called. It's called Other Great Shows and Networks to Check Out. So I put you into awesome. that thing. So I'll give you a link to that. So David, thank you for coming on. Thanks Eventually for having me. It's been a pleasure. Oh, yeah, when is Content Camp this year? Do you know yet? So we don't know yet. It's probably going to be in the spring. But spring. We'll let everybody know. That's a, that's probably a three month window. So <laughs> somewhere somewhere in those three months, it'll, it'll be <laughs> awesome. We'll we'll make sure that we post an alert when that comes out. So and also, Excellent. Bar Camp is usually in November, right? Yeah, usually late October, early November. So and then it's barcampphilly.com, right? Dot org, yeah. Dot org, sorry. And then Content Content Camp does have a website. Uh, it does, uh, and off the top of my head, I'm blanking out. I think it's contentcampphilly.com, but uh, if you just Google Content Camp Philly, trust me, it'll come up first. You'll find it exa exactly, exactly. All right, David, get back to work. All right, I'll see you. Thanks All so right, much. Catch you later. Bye. Bye.